As a cruel conqueror, Amir Timur has gone down in history for destroying ancient cities and slaughtering entire populations. The other side of his reputation is as a generous supporter of the creative industries. His capital, Samarkand, in present-day Uzbekistan, is one of his most enduring legacies. To say that Tamerlane was infamous for his brutality in battle would be an understatement. His tactics included terror, scorched earth strategies, and mass murder. Many times, entire cities would be annihilated during his conquests, and his enemies would be tortured and mutilated as a result. The complex life of Timur, who has been dead for over 600 years, has never ceased to intrigue historians. Welcome to Hallmark History, about Tamerlane. Tamerlane was a fearsome military leader and conqueror who left an indelible mark on history. Let's explore who Tamerlane was and the incredible feats he accomplished. You'll finish with a deeper understanding of this influential figure and how and why his legacy continues to have an impact today. And please like, share and subscribe to enjoy and see more of this, thank you. On April 8, 1336, Timur entered the world in the area around Kesh, now called Shah Sams, Uzbekistan, which is located in Transoxiana about 50 miles south of the oasis of Samarkand. Timur's father, Teragai Bahar, was the tribal chief of the Barlas people, and his mother, Tajina Begum, was a member of the tribe. The Barlas originated in Transoxiana, but their ancestry could be traced back to the legions of Genghis Khan and the Turkic peoples who lived there before them. The Barlas were not nomads like their forebears but rather settled farmers and merchants. The 14th century biography Tamerlane or Timur, the Great Amir, written by Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Arab Shah, claims that Timur was a maternal descendant of Genghis Khan, though the veracity of this claim is unclear. To restore the great Mongol empire founded by Genghis Khan, Timur, the last of the great nomadic conquerors of the Euro-Asian steppe, led a massive military campaign. As it turns out, Timur and the 1227 deceased Genghis Khan had a common ancestor. Timur, during his lifetime, accomplished more conquests than any other person, including Alexander the Great. Near the end of his reign, Timur consolidated his power over the remnants of the Shagat Khanate, the Ilkhanate, and the Golden Horse, and he made an unsuccessful attempt to reinstate the Yuan dynasty in China. His army, which was composed of men of many different cultural backgrounds, was famous and feared across Asia, Africa, and Europe. From Delhi to Moscow, it spanned not only the length of Europe but also Asia, passing through Central Asia's Jin Shan Mountains and Turkey's Taurus Range. Approximately 17 million people, about 5% of the world's population at the time, perished as a direct result of Timur's campaigns, according to modern scholars. The chaotic rule of Timur paved the way for the more organized gunpowder empires to emerge in the late 15th and early 16th centuries. Timur was described as having a broad forehead and a big, powerful head. The full beard he sported contrasted with his pale, ruddy skin. According to his biographer Sharaf Adin, Timur was shot in the right leg and right arm while stealing sheep when he was in his 20s, leaving him lame in both legs and unable to use his right hand for the rest of his life. That's why we call him Timur Ilang, in Persian, Timur the Lame. Despite his limp, he still managed to take over all of Shagatai's ancestral land before he turned 35. With his independence declared at Balsh, he made Samarkand his capital. Timur did speak two or three languages, such as Turkic and Persian, and arranged to have history books read to him as he ate dinner, but there is no evidence that he ever learned to read or write. He is a man of great intelligence and is a huge fan of the arts, particularly architecture and gardening. He enjoyed the game of chess so much that he came up with an enhanced variant in which two times as many pieces are used on a board with 110 squares. This game is commonly referred to as Tamerlane chess nowadays. When Timur was young, tensions ran high in Transoxiana between the nomadic clans and the sedentary Shagate Mongol Khans who ruled him. The Shagate had given up the nomadic lifestyle of Genghis Khan and their other forebears and were now taxing the populace heavily to fund their urban way of life. Citizens were understandably outraged by this new tax. Defeating the Shagate Emperor Boralde in 1347, a local named Kuzgan took control. Kuzgan would remain in power until his death in 1358. Many different warlords and religious leaders fought for control after Kuzgan's death. 
In 1360, the Mongol warlord Tufluk Timur emerged victorious. Timur's army was divided into two men, which consisted of tens of thousands of soldiers. The army gained notoriety not only for its ferocity and violence but also for the diversity of its ranks. From nomadic groups to settled populations, from Muslims to Christians, from Mughals to Anatolians, and from ethnicities as diverse as Turks, Arabs, Tajiks, Georgians, Persians, and Indians, Timur's army was a melting pot of peoples. The Barlas and the Jalayar were two of the most loyal tribes to Timur. The Great Battle of Kandudsha was won by Timur's army on June 18, 1391, and the Battle of Ankara was won by Timur and his men on July 28, 1402. Timur was an effective ruthless soldier in Persia due to his bravery and tactical prowess, and he quickly gained a large following. Tufluk Timur's son Ilyas Koja was defeated in battle in 1364 thanks to the combined forces of his father and Hussein. The two warlords had united Transoxiana by 1366. Action, intrigue, and cryptic predictions abound in the stories. According to these legends, Timur met and wed his first wife, Aljai Turkanaga, while growing up in the city of Bukhara. Around the year 1370, she passed away, and after that, he wedded several of the daughters of Amir Hussein Karanas, an adversarial leader, among whom was Sarai Mukdat. Over the course of his conquests, Timur married or otherwise acquired dozens of women whose former husbands or fathers he had killed. Timur was able to launch an assault on his former ally Hussein. As a result of the siege and subsequent death of Hussein at Balsh, Timur proclaimed himself to be the region's sole ruler. Because his father was not a direct descendant of Genghis Khan, Timur was not entitled to the title of Khan and instead held the title of Emir, Arabic for Prince. Timur took over the remainder of Central Asia over the course of a decade. With control of Central Asia in his hands, Timur invaded Russia in 1380. Both the Mongol Khan Tokhtamish and the Lithuanians were ultimately defeated with his assistance. Timur opened fire on Persia in 1383 by capturing Herat, in what is now Afghanistan. He had unified all of Persia by 1385. Timur invaded Russia twice, in 1391 and 1395, to battle his former pupil and rival, Tokhtamish. In 1395, Moscow fell under Timurid control. Timur was preoccupied in the north during a revolt in Persia. As a response, he destroyed entire cities and erected macabre monuments out of the skulls of the murdered inhabitants. As of 1396, Timur had also taken control of Georgia, Armenia, Mesopotamia, Azerbaijan, and Iraq. In September 1398, Timur invaded India with an army of 90,000. They crossed the Indus River. After the death of Delhi Sultanate ruler Sultan Firuz Shah Tufluk, R. 1351 to 1388, the country split apart into independent states. The path of destruction left by the Turkic slash Mongol invaders was littered with bodies. By the end of December, the Delhi army had been wiped out, and the city itself was in ruins. Timur captured a large quantity of valuables and 90 battle elephants bringing them back to Samarkand. In 1399, Timur turned his attention westward and recaptured Azerbaijan and Syria. In 1401, the city of Baghdad was completely annihilated, and some 20,000 of its citizens were killed. Timur conquered early Ottoman Turkey and won Egypt's submission in the same month, 1402. One of Emperor Hung envoys Wu's to Timur's court arrived in Samarkand in 1395, and was promptly arrested by the conqueror. The first Ming Emperor, Hung Wei, had been sending out diplomatic missions to various former Yuan vessels, pleading with them to acknowledge the Ming as their new masters. Timur had no intention of submitting to Ming, and instead was planning a campaign to reclaim that stretch of the Silk Road, return Yuan to its Mongol glory days, and surpass Alexander the Great in terms of conquest. A new Ming Emperor, Yang Lo, took the throne from Hung Wu in 1402. Despite knowing Timur's motives were not friendly, he sent an envoy to Samarkand. Like the first ambassador, this one ended up in jail. Timur and his large army left Samarkand sometime in early January 1405 CE. His astrologers had chosen the exact date. He was already well into old age at this point, and his body was too frail to support his walking. Actually, he wasn't even on a horse, a litter carried him around. The trip was draining. 
however, and by the time Timor arrived in Utrar in late January, he was in terrible shape. He didn't make it past Utrar, on either February 17th or 18th, 1405 he passed away there. His burial at the Gurimir in Samarkand followed after his body was returned there. His goal appears to have been to make Samarkand, his capital, the first Islamic city. According to historical accounts from the time, 19 million people were killed by Timur's armies. It's likely an exaggeration, but Timur did appear to take pleasure in killing people for the sake of killing them. The conqueror warned his dozens of sons and grandsons not to fight for the throne before he died, but they did so anyway. Timur's grandson Oligbeg, 1393 to 1449, reign 1447 to 1449, was the most influential member of the Timurid dynasty. He was also a respected scholar and astronomer. However, Ulug was a poor leader and was eventually killed by his own son in 1449. The descendants of Timur fared better in India, where in 1526 Babur established the Mughal dynasty. Until the British expelled them in 1857, the Mughals ruled India. The Taj Mahal's designer and constructor, Shah Jahan, is thus also a Timurid. His massive conquest and his desire to unite the Islamic world under one caliphate make Tamerlane a historical icon. He was an outstanding leader, an influential monarch, and a supporter of the creative and scientific communities. The many monuments and buildings he oversaw will remain as a reminder of his reign to future generations. Thank you for taking the time to visit Hallmark History and watch on this remarkable man and his enduring impact on history. We appreciate your interest and enthusiasm tremendously. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.